Thanks for staying with us. Now, as long as we are faced with insecurities, poor infrastructure, poor or zero quality of education, poor health care, high level of poverty, unemployment in Nigeria, with a growing youth population, we are all sitting on a keg of gunk powder. Corruption and poor governance are said to be the key factors holding back Africa's development. And this, over the years, we've seen it as a very big elephant that seems not to be, I mean, or that cannot be subdued. So 2020 saw the end of silence from the young people, who, by the way, carry the majority of numbers as it relates to our population. Yes, we have a voice and matter as it relates to decision making but how powerful can the young voices i mean how much power can they wield how much power do we have and how much do we know you know about this power do we even know how powerful our voices are and have we been channeling our voices right you know have we been channeling those voices in the right direction that's our conversation for this evening now please let us hear what you have to say remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at way show africa one with the hashtag way show or you send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 803 all right so um before we bring in our guest like in two minutes i just wanted to hear your thoughts and Maurice's thoughts on the power behind our voices, you know, as young people, and have we really channeled our voices right? Let me come to you first. Well, Santa. I would say that uh, I mean this is a cliche saying, but uh, I think it's about time that we keep repeating it because as cliche is, as cliche as it is, somehow it still haven't gotten into our heads that our voice is our power, is our strength, is a weapon, mm. right? But lately, I feel that we are starting to understand the office of the citizen. We are starting to understand that we have a voice. And it's not just, that voice is not just for you to talk about your neighbor or to gossip in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. It's about using it to influence the society, using it to decide who leads you, you know, using it for positive impact. So I think, um, as I, let's say from 2020, we are seeing a big change in the use of our voices. So yes, um, we, are, we are waking up to the reality. All right. All right. So, Mori, do you think we understand the power that is behind our voices as young people, given that we own the population in terms of numbers? Mori, are you there? I, I think we've... Do we, did we lose Mori? <laughs> All right. So, let me just bring in our guest. Bade Wonuola. Huh? Hola <laughs> Teju Oyelakin, known popularly as um, Teju Babyface, and that's his professional name as well, is a Nigerian comedian and talk show host. He is credited with giving Nigeria its first offering of late night talk television with the multi award winning Teju Babyface show. Oyelakin is a United Nations Sustainable Development Goals ambassador for Nigeria with a focus on decent work and economic growth. And he's joined us live from Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us tell you baby face <laughs> i thank you for thank you for your attempt to not murder the name that my parents gave me with much pride okay. i hope i i hope i tried it is a <laughs> long one though my, my my father my father is probably turning around in his grave oh like, my goodness uh, what <laughs> the, the way you said it actually sounds better than what all these americans try to call it i've uh, been called all sorts of things it. yeah yeah, so, yeah i can imagine all right so ted you i mean you listened to a bit uh, listened in a bit on our banter on um what's it called um the power behind our voices as young people in Nigeria. I mean, 2020 saw the, the awakening of the youth, they will say, mm -hmm. where everybody now seems like, okay, we all have a voice and we are now channeling that voice, you know, towards better governance and change and all of that. You know, but in your opinion, what would you say is the assessment of, you know, do we first of all really have a voice as young people in Nigeria? And if we do, how powerful is that voice? And thirdly, if, we, if you say the voice is powerful, how much of that power are we aware of as young people that we, that, I mean, how, how much of that power do we know that we have concerning that voice? Mm, okay, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your, uh, to this program. I, I apologize, I think I was supposed to be there on, that might have been Wednesday. Yes, last uh, week. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't uh, make it. I don't know. You will hear in the background as we proceed 
uh, the very rich and very, very vibrant voice of two little kids. <laughs> I am a parent of twins. Yeah, we know. A, a boy and a girl. Yeah, a boy and a girl who seem to have eaten TNT or an explosive from, a, from, from heaven. <laughs> Their energy is, you have to see to believe. People always tell us, bring the twins to our house. I will tell them, you guys don't know what you are asking for. You know, ask God again. <laughs> they know. And then we take the twins and then they understand. So, uh, yes. So in between having to fulfill my professional obligations, and my obligations as a father and a husband, or a husband and a father, hmm. uh, I apologize for not being here. No uh, problem. Which is my loss, actually. Because had I known that I was going to be greeted by the uh, the visage of two beautiful ladies, I I mean I, I would have been here every day just watching, <laughs> just you know. <laughs> okay, I mean, enough of the washing. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just amazing. I, I have both of you on both sides of the screen, and I don't even know who to focus oh, yeah, on. Like, right oh, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm just gonna share. Not a problem. <laughs> okay, so uh, to the matter on ground, I I look at the problem of. Or rather, because I say a problem now, you didn't ask me about a problem, but that speaks to what I want to talk about. I, I see the plight of Nigeria as a problem, and I probably didn't need to say that, mm -hmm. but I, I don't see it as a problem of Nigeria. I see it as a black problem. For I like to ask people many times that, uh, do you not find it strange that when you think about it, there is no country, there is no landmass, mm -hmm. there is no recognized sovereignty of black people as a country, <laughs> that is a first world country, okay? When you get tired of Nigeria or wherever you are in the world as a black person, and you decide you want to leave your black country to go to where life could be better, you're going to the West, you're going to a Caucasian land. So uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe my education is limited. So I, I throw the question to you, can you point to the country of black people that is run by black people and populated by black people that is a shining example for development and all the good things, human progress in the world that you would happily migrate to with your family? Hmm. I don't think there is. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I cannot think of one. If, if, if it's not Nigeria, it would be the West for me. <laughs> Truthfully okay, so, speaking. <laughs> so I, so I, I don't see our problems uh, really as a Nigeria problem. I see it as a, as a race problem. But we need to always symbolize. We need to have a symbol to speak to the greater problem. So let's use the Nigerian um, man or the Nigerian person or the Nigerian youth uh, about whom you have asked me concerning 2023 or whenever else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we speak to this Nigerian youth, and I want to believe that I'm a part of the youth, if not for my baby face, but I mean, I'm still 42. I look like 26, I was told. Yes, yes so, you do. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we are the youth. And I was telling somebody the other day that, um, you know that if you vote me into government today, right, you know that I will steal money, right? Yeah, you do know that. Hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and the person said, really, you? I said, yeah, I will, I, will, I will embezzle, I will take what is not mine. I said, if not for myself, because of people like you. I said, the moment that I become governor, or say president, everybody's going to call you to congratulate you. Who hmm. are the moment I become president or governor, they're going to call you just by virtue of the fact that I appeared on this show. Mm -hmm. Sons, they're going to call you. They're going to say, you were there. They're going to say, congratulations. You're going to say, why? They're going to say, tell you maybe face is not governor. <laughs> it is our time. Hmm. Now, what, what does that mean, it is our time? It means that they expect you to use your position in any number of ways to benefit them. Mm. And the least of what you can do is nepotism, which means you put them in the position to reap or to benefit from the collective cake. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if by any set of circumstances you consider yourself a righteous person and you do not do that, then you will be castigated while you're in office and you'll be crucified when you leave office. In the first place, they will never believe that you did not steal. They will say that you were stingy and you only stole for you and your family. your family. Okay? And then when you don't do that, if you don't see, they will say you are a fool. They will say that, is it in your own head, on your own head and during your own time, that you will now be righteous? Hmm. And I've seen this play out. So we have a problem. I have said quite a f on a few occasions that, as at 1999, 98, 99, we were crying for God to deliver us from what we consider the oppression of the military. 
And it seems providentially, something happened. Sani Abacha, who was the symbol of what was oppressing us, was taken out of the way. And all of a sudden, we were given this democracy. What we had been clamoring for, what the whole world had told us that we needed. And here we are, 1999, 2021. You do the math. I'm thinking that is about 22 years, give or take. My math is not exactly the best. My arithmetic is not the best. But let's see about, about over two decades. So I will ask you, are we in a worse off position now than we were in 1999, or are we in a better position? We're in a worse off position, if you ask me. I mean, I don't remember <laughs> so much in 1999. Forgive me. I think I just told the world my age. <laughs> oh, well. I, I can tell you about 99 if you want to know. I was just discussing with a friend yesterday how on a Friday night in the year 2000, we got into our car to go and do a comedy show in Shagam. We got in Friday night about 5, 7 p.m. We got into the car, my Honda Accord, and we drove to Shagamu. We got to Shagamu in under 45 minutes. We did the show, stayed the night, had a good time, woke up at dawn, came back to Lagos. We were still doing that as at 2000, 2001. You cannot do that now. Hmm. You can't. We would get in our car in those days and leave Lagos. I mean, we used to do Lagos Ibadan because we go do these comedy shows, UI, Ibadopoli. We'd leave Lagos. I remember I'd do a wedding in Lagos on a Saturday afternoon and then I'd drive all the way to Ibadan. Immediately after the wedding, we'd leave Lagos maybe six. In fact, there was one time we went to Ibadopoli to do a show. As I was getting into Ibadopoli, we saw the students fleeing from the auditorium. So we asked them, what's the problem? They said that the court boys had started to fight. So my friend and I just turned the car around and we drove back to Lagos. That was by 8 p.m. Hmm. We got to Lagos by 8.51, 9. Hmm. 2001. So my point is that we have definitely declined so much over the course of the democracy that we said we wanted. So the point, what I tell people, is that I believe that if you take everybody who is out of government today, from the highest office to the lowest office, you take out everybody from the highest office in the land to the lowest uh, uh, clerk in the smallest local government. You take everybody out and you fill those positions with a new set of people. You're going to have the same exact results that we have in Nigeria today. Why do you feel those so? You, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say something. Uh, you, you talked about um, taking everybody out and um, if you bring in the new um, set of people inside, they're going to get the, the, the same set of results. And also, um, so, something you said about if you enter government and you don't embezzle money, people are going to call you stupid or something like that. Now, and uh, considering what I just answered right now, that I do not remember so much of what happened in 1999, except what I read in, you know, read in the papers or read in research, which is quite different from, sometimes the stories are twisted. So the question is, do you think this has to do, like, the poor changes or the slow changes we're noticing, um, how do I put it? Like we're expecting changes, but it's not happening at the rate that we want it. Okay. Would you blame it on our lack of uh, knowledge of our real history? Okay, great question. Uh, where I was going, which your question now pushes me to faster, is that a great man once said that, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your of mind. Your mind. What I'm trying to get to is that to solve the Nigerian problem in any age class, whether you're speaking to the youth or to anybody, we need to have a radical change of our minds. The way we think about power, about government, about our rights in Nigeria is there's something wrong with it. Mm. That's where I'm going. That's what I'm saying that. So uh, the vote of the youth, if you give it to any number of people, you're invariably going to have the same exact result that we have today. Mm. So I'm saying that it, it doesn't even matter what... We, we do buy the votes, okay? Uh, I, I could give you several examples, and I won't mention names. Have you ever felt in Nigeria how, have you ever been in those positions or you've seen those circumstances where somebody, a person whom you knew to be an honest person, sorry, an honest person, or who you knew to be a, you know, um, you know, a decent person got into government and you were very happy. He's now governor, he's now minister, and you were very happy. He's going to do something, and then nothing changed. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt that way? Of Have you course. Ever seen that happen? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm telling you. So what, what we need to change is the mindset. Teju, so now I think, because why we chose this voice conversation is that I believe the youth have been talking. 
maybe this mindset that you're talking about, it's possible that with what we are talking about and with all the things that goes on on Twitter, whenever it comes to governance and all of that, we are beginning to realize some of these challenges that you have drawn, right? But my question is, um, how do we channel it? Because a lot of us actually have very powerful voices that can influence some of these things that you're talking about, changing the mindset and turning things around for Nigeria. I believe so. You know, we might not be there yet. We're not perfect. But I believe that there are still a lot of people, you know, that can influence such things. How should we even go about it? Because some people do not even believe that they are even, they even matter in the scheme of things. Then I'll come to Mori when you answer that. Okay. Um, that's a good question. Now, I, I won't even uh, pretend like I have... Um, all the answers talk much less of a lot of the answers or most of the answers but i have an i have an answer okay uh, you must always we must always learn as much as we can from people who have stuff to teach us mm. okay so uh, i remember a lagbaja song that i like uh, it, it says that nigerian youth you must take power but not by force you must take power by sense Hmm. That's hmm. what the Lagbaja song says. You must take the power by sense. Thus, it means that uh, the Bible says that can a king who has 10,000 men go against a king who has 20,000? If he cannot, then he must sit down and think of his battle strategy and how it is that he's able to conquer the one who has more. And if he cannot, then he sues for terms of peace. Hmm. What all that means is that if you're a Nigerian youth, who's trying and agitating, uh, you know, to get better governance in Nigeria, you cannot do it the way we seem to want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I go back to Lagbaja's, uh, you know, position. You cannot take it by force, mm. okay? You, you simply cannot. Now, uh, NSAS came about, and we were quite, uh, you know, what, what I got from NSAS of everything was not that anything changed. It was to prove to us that we had this generation and when I say generation, I don't mean age. People use generation to mean age. Mm -hmm. That's not what it always means. Uh, Lake Alder says that a generation is a mindset. Mm -hmm. So if you're 70 and I am 40 and there is somebody who is 21, but we think the same way, then we are a generation in thought. Mm -hmm. So what NSAS and the Lekki Toget served to inform some of us of was, was that there was a generation of Nigerians, mostly young people, who could actually stand up and speak. Hmm. You know, that was what was exciting about it, a generation that wanted change. Now, having established that, what that proved to us is that we're not going to take it by force. We have to take it by sense. Hmm. Now, what does that sense mean and how do we get there by taking it by sense? I'm glad to see that you will find young Nigerians who are beginning to do that already. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook came all the way to Nigeria, not on the invitation of the government. He didn't come all the way to Nigeria to come and see a big man. He came to see a startup a technological startup in Nigeria, in Lagos. Mm. Somebody who even despite or in spite of all the things that we lack had been able to get to the attention of Mark Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. There are these two young men who are younger than I am. The proof of the fact that they're younger than I am is that they attended a university that wasn't even existing by the time I was in the university. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called Paystack. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got an investment from up now. These are the guys who are coming. Let's come into my industry. I've seen Bonner Boy on Trevor Noah. I was watching uh, Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show just last week, and there's, there's this guy I saw. I didn't even know he was Nigerian. It took me a few minutes because I'm a bit removed from hip hop these days. I, I forget his name. You guys have to remind me. He's uh, something, come on, Teju. Please, can you guys remind me of we Nigerian artists who are, who are, who are you know, making international? This guy's young, had a bit of dreads. He's not Naramali. Um, I, Omale. Um, Omale. No, not 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 um, um, Something. I think there was fire. Fire boy. Fire something. boy. I uh, fire boy. I, I think that's the guy. You know. You know, and, and I'm watching Fallon. I'm like, what? So you have these young Nigerians who are already coming to international prominence. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to keep growing. Mm -hmm. We need to keep growing that. We need to keep growing that. And once we keep growing that, we will start to influence those decisions now. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what I'd like to speak to is the Nigerian youth sense. Okay, there are a lot of us who are still caught up in this whole 
you know, psychophancy, uh, this whole godfatherism, this whole getting into politics and steal money. There are still many of those people. We need to speak to those people. Because you know what will happen invariably? Mm -hmm. All these old people, whether by force or, or by, by, not, by nature, they will, they will leave. leave now. <laughs> that be? Right. The Obasanjo you spoke about. I don't know how old Baba is right now. But I can only imagine that Baba will not be around again for another 30 years. If Baba is around again in the next 30 years, then he has to, to tell us what he has been drinking. I'm not good. <laughs> okay, we're going to hold that thought, Teju. Let's take a I, break. I mean, I mean, so, I mean, so that's it. So you know, uh, that's my thought. Yeah, so let's take a break. Uh, I think Maury is back now. So when we come back, we'll hear Maury's thoughts and uh, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us and we'll take some comments. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> 